Hey guys, welcome back to Backyard Cooking 101. I'm here with Chi, owner of Love Fats Ice Cream. And what are we gonna do today? So we're gonna make some mandazis. It's basically like a spiced Kenyan donut or a spiced Kenyan beignet. So what we're gonna start with is the self-rising flour. And we're not using yeast in this video since there's already the, there's already like some baking soda already in the flour or baking powder. So I'm gonna add some spices, some cinnamon, some ginger, and some cardamom to the flour. Give it a little whisk, incorporate everything. Here you wanna whisk for yes. me. And then while she's doing that, I'm gonna zest this lemon. And I'm using organic lemons because I wanna use the skin. So there's no pesticides on the outside of it. When did you learn how to make these? Um, I think I was maybe like six or seven. Really? Yeah, this is like one of the easiest Kenyan recipes. <laughs> and we have it for breakfast with chai. Ooh. And they're lightly sweetened donuts. Kenyans don't really like sweet stuff. So there's about two tablespoons of sugar in here. So they're healthy beignets. You know, they're healthy-ish. <laughs> <laughs> they're healthy, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I like to let myself believe that they are. Exactly. <laughs> So what other um, like Kenyan dishes do you like to cook? Um, one of my favorites to eat and cook with my sister is bajillas. Mm -hmm. And they're thinly sliced potatoes. And then you make like a chickpea batter for them. And in the batter you put cilantro or in Kenya they call it dania. And it's delicious. And I'm a fan of anything fried. <laughs> yeah. <and> anything <laughs> that has potatoes in it. Hence the mandazis, mm -hmm. I just love my fried shit. <laughs> All right, so we're good there. And then I'm gonna make a little well in the middle. So I'm making pasta. Yeah. And you kind of wanna have, you wanna see the bottom of the bowl. Add my salt to the well. Do you wanna start heating up the oil? Yeah, sure. Okay. And I'm also gonna add the two tablespoons. I use raw sugar. And then I'm going to add in the butter. And then I'm gonna try to keep this little well in the middle and put the butter around the edges and break up the butter until it's kind of like, it's kind of like you're making pie crust. Make the butter really small. So I still have my raw sugar in the middle of the flour and then I broke up the butter. So there's kind of like little pea shaped sizes of butter and flour and then I'm going to add the vanilla as well. Do you want to add that for me? Yes. Kind of just eyeball what's like a half teaspoon. Okay. And a shot of vodka. And then I put <laughs> the whole bottle in. Right. <laughs> Sandra Lee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see you. <laughs> just a little bit more. Okay, that's perfect. Okay. <laughs> and then if you want to start adding the water, and I'll whisk from the middle. So okay. slowly add in the warm in the water. And then I'm just stirring from the middle. It's kind of like making pasta, and then I'm adding some dough. And then stop right there, and we'll see if we need some more. Okay. So now I can kind of incorporate from the outsides. And I'm kind of just seeing if I need some more water. I think we might be good. Okay. Yeah, we're good. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump this onto the cutting board, or you can just do it right onto your countertop. That's what I usually do. Mm -hmm. Try to be clean though. <laughs> so is this like a breakfast thing or yeah. like any time? This is a breakfast food okay. usually. Um, my grandpa, he had a hotel and they would always be in like the pastry case mm -hmm. of the hotel, mm -hmm. like for breakfast. Um, it's also just a snack, so you don't have to have it just for breakfast. Mm -hmm. You can have it any time of the day. So now I'm gonna try to gather the dough up. Knead the dough for about 10 minutes. I'm actually just gonna take it off of the plastic wrap now. Mm -hmm. Use that excess flour so it doesn't stick. So why is chai, I hear you say a lot about chai. Like, is it like a big thing in Kenya? It's a really big thing. And I think people think that it's mainly um, tea. It's, it's just tea, yeah. there's no particular way to make it, and honestly, that trash you're getting at Starbucks is not chai. <laughs> like, I'm gonna let you know that right now. Um, the, it's a process to make chai, and it's a, a 
a popular Indian beverage that migrated over to Kenya. So I gotta go to Kenya. Hell yeah. <laughs> when are we going? <laughs> what would you do if you moved? If I moved? Mm -hmm. I would just make my ice cream there. Really? Yeah. That's dope. Because it's something that's lacking. Like, it's funny because they have a lot of cows and they have a lot of really good fresh milk. But the ice cream is horrible. Really? <laughs> horrible. What does it taste like? It just, it tastes so artificial. Yeah, it's really creamy, I think, because of the milk they use. Mm -hmm. But the flavors are just kind of off-putting and just, we're, they're not there yet, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I, so I think I would just make like dairy-free ice cream like I'm doing here. Mm -hmm. They have really good avocados, which is what I use in my ice cream. Huge. Well, huge and ice avocados. cream is like such an American thing. Too. It is like yeah. they have like mandazis, you know, so they're yeah. not worried about ice and, cream. Yeah, and they kind of don't really like sweet things, and ice cream is generally sweet. sweet. Yeah, but I try. That's why I also try not to make my ice cream too sweet. Mm -hmm. Just from my background, like being a Kenyan, like we don't really do sweets. Mm -hmm. I'm the opposite because I have a huge sweet tooth. <laughs> but <laughs> but generally, like their desserts aren't sweet. That'd be cute. Like yeah. I can see like a cool. Kenyan love fat ice cream location. Hell yeah, cheaper avocados yeah. too. <laughs> For sure. Cheaper, bigger avocados. Yeah, no more um, importing. Yeah, right? So it's starting to look pretty good. I'd say maybe like good. two more minutes. It's looking really elastic and smooth. And so the way to test it is you can just grab the dough like this and it should stretch out. And it's almost there, it's still ripping a little bit. So we just kind of have, I'd say like two, maybe three more minutes depending on your kneading skills i i like to knead because that means i don't have to work out that way <laughs> so <laughs> get those arms right <laughs> yeah and it has a pretty color to it too yeah because of the cardamom and the cinnamon how has your um business been going it's been going really well i've seen that you've been uh posting like the special for uh, valentine's day what was it, it was chocolate yes. covered strawberry chocolate covered strawberry and hibiscus strawberry um, I'm obsessed with strawberries, and so I noticed that there was some organic ones for sale at a farm nearby. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, let me just go for it. And we usually just have one flavor of the month, and then we'll usually have our classic flavors like a chocolate or a caramel. Um, but this month I wanted to do two because I asked my viewers, I was like, yo, what do you want for the February flavor of the month? And people were going off. I forgot what I said. It was a lot of chocolate covered strawberry. It was a lot of like chocolate and strawberry and cherry things. And I was like, yo, ch cherries don't yeah, even no. grow in Texas. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Do you like berries at all? Um, I like raspberries. Okay, that's it. And yeah, that's it. Like <laughs> blueberries are okay. Like I'm starting to get accustomed to it. Yes. Um, See, my sister hates all sorts of berries. She'll lie and be like, I'm allergic, so they don't put it on her plate. <laughs> it's just like super tart, and I want like a super sweet, like I feel refreshing that. fruit. Like, I love cantaloupe, I love pineapple, stuff like that. And I grew up with like eating mangoes. Yeah, so, yeah, me yeah. too. Mango and papaya is what we grew up eating. See, and I hate papaya. What? Like, I'm such a disgrace <laughs> to my family because every time I go to Honduras, like, my aunt welcomes me with like papaya smoothie or something. Yes. And I'm just like I just oh. I'm not feeling it. Like I don't know what it is. I'd be all over that. So I'm the American like outcast of my family. <laughs> Honestly, me too. Like whenever I would go to Kenya, I wouldn't eat anything on the table. So I would just make chips or French fries like every night. You're not joking about like the No, I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, the other day I told my mom I'm moving to Peru because there's over over 40 different types of potatoes. I'm like, I'm sold. <laughs> experiment my friends actually it started her own company fern web uh backpackers yeah i saw that yeah, yeah yeah so she um she travels a lot but she's gonna like start doing like tour guides of those nice. countries and it's like super affordable um shout out to her and yeah, yeah so she i think one of the ones is peru so if you're down there yes. you know, we could go to peru and Girl, she, show you all the ropes eat some potatoes potatoes all day i'm gonna come back looking like a potato <laughs> Okay, I think we're done. It's really soft and smooth. The gluten has been activated and now I can like easily roll it into a little ball like this. And then we're gonna put it back in this bowl to rest. I'm gonna just dump out any of the excess flour. And you just put it here. And then you want some plastic wrap or sometimes when I don't have plastic wrap, I'll just use a towel, but you wanna place it directly on the dough so that it doesn't dry out. If you just put it on top, it'll dry out. 
don't want that. And then you're just going to let it rest for about 10 minutes. And then you kind of want to check on your oil to see if it's getting too hot. It feels really hot right now, so I'm, I might turn it down just a little bit so that they don't burn the first batch. You want some? I think Penny <laughs> wants some and Dad's. She's a cultural <laughs> Oh, yes. We've raised her that. <laughs> what inspired you to start uh, making ice cream? came from just wanting to make something like sweet and creamy for my mom's birthday and I had been experimenting with ice cream at the time and she recently had like diagnosis that she couldn't have any dairy at all which she kind of drank Kenyan tea like it was a religion so that was something that she had like trouble with so I was like well let me find a really good dairy free alternative and you know what I love like most vegan ice cream is because it's made with coconut Every flavor tastes like coconut. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not the biggest coconut fan oh, yeah. either. I'm with you. Like a lot of dairy free ice cream tastes like coconut mm -hmm. or it tastes like almond milk. I want the flavors to come through. It's really nice to make vegan ice cream because that extra fat from eggs and milk and cream doesn't like crowd the palate. You can actually taste the matcha that I put in there. You can actually taste the lavender, anything like that. I love it. Like I'm always like uh, looking at your Instagram, like, I want a pint. <laughs> like, I went through that pint of the, what was it, the lemon lime? Yeah. I love lemon lime. The girl is not vegan, and I'm over here tearing up vegan ice cream. Hell yeah. And can be convert. <laughs> That's the goal. I mean, I'm not, like, out here trying to convert a bunch of people, but, like, it, vegan ice cream can be good, and that was my goal of starting my business. Mm -hmm. like, I wanted something that people that consume dairy would enjoy, and people that don't consume dairy and are vegan would enjoy as well. So where can they find you? So you can find us at the Downtown Farmer's Market every Saturday, 9 to 1. It's at Republic Square, if you live in Austin, just right on Guadalupe. Um, and then we actually just got into the Mueller Farmer's Market yesterday. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. So we'll be there from 10 to 2 every Sunday. And or just look at our bio, Love yeah. Fats Ice Cream. You can just go directly to the markets that we're at. It's listed in there. Yeah, and I'll put her Instagram down below in the link and everything so y'all can, it's easier to find her. She, she's amazing. I love what she does. And and then this is not traditional, like putting caramel on top of your mandazi. This is your little this, twist? Yeah, this is my little American twist. Exactly. So we're going to make some vegan caramel. I have some butter or some earth balance butter, vegan butter, basically any vegan butter. Coconut oil will work as well if you don't have vegan butter. What's the difference between vegan butter and real butter? It's really just, there's more coconut oil in there. Um, they have to put like some emulsifiers in it, usually like... This has soy in it. There are some earth balance like options that are soy free, mm -hmm. and it's more water based. Okay. I mean, there's water and butter as well, but there's a little bit more in here. Mm -hmm. But I actually realized you can brown vegan butter just like you can brown regular butter. I was... And this is a really easy caramel recipe: butter, coconut milk, and some brown sugar, and some sea salt and vanilla. Now that the butter's melted, I'm going to add in some brown sugar. I haven't had breakfast either. I'm like, <laughs> this is gonna be my breakfast. Perfect breakfast treat. Mm -hmm. Does it matter if it's like light brown sugar or dark brown sugar? No, you can use either. Um, this is a light brown sugar. It just depends on the color you want your caramel. Gotcha. If you want it really dark, you can use dark brown sugar. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you can just use light brown sugar. And it's bubbling up. I'm gonna start adding the coconut milk. And this is basically how I make our caramel ice cream. Like, so do you have like toppings as well if they're on top of your ice cream? Yeah, I, my favorite topping is the toasted marshmallow fluff. I use aquafaba. You know the liquid that comes in the can yes. of beans? Mm -hmm. That's aquafaba. Okay. I use aquafaba from chickpeas, but you can use it from any bean can. Mm -hmm. You can also make your own aquafaba, like if you boil your beans at home. Mm -hmm. It's super easy and it's not as finicky as dealing with egg whites. It is the same texture. Same texture. Yeah, it it's is. Same texture. Yeah, now that I'm thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, and then I just torch it with the blowtorch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll do that. And also, like, I've made some spiced granola before, like lemongrass and cardamom granola with coconut flakes. Oh, yeah. Did you sell your parfaits that you said you made? I did. How did that yeah, go? That went really well. It was basically the ice cream base before it was frozen. Mm -hmm. That's what we used, like, as the yogurt gotcha. or cream. And then granola. And then I made a vegan lemon curd. She does it all. <laughs> <laughs> I try to make everything. So now I'm putting in this thermometer to check the temperature. 
you want it to be 235 degrees. Usually takes about 10 minutes. And just make sure you don't put the thermometer at the bottom of the pot. Because then it'll lie. Exactly. <laughs> that smells so good. And then when you're storing it, you can just store it in a glass container with like a tight seal. Mm -hmm. Or a mason jar is usually what I put it in. And then if you want to heat it up after you bring it out of the fridge, you can just put it in a pot of hot water instead of putting the caramel back on the stove. Okay. Unwrap your dough. And then we're gonna make them really big because we're gonna stuff them with ice cream. So I'm just gonna put, I'm just gonna basically cut it in half. We're gonna stuff them with ice cream? Yes! What kind of ice cream? <laughs> I brought coffee ice cream and then also I brought banana bread ice cream. Remember when you offered me coffee earlier and I said yes. I have a bad relationship mm -hmm. with that? So I don't, I don't drink coffee because caffeine makes me like so jittery and I hate that feeling. Um, but I eat coffee ice cream because I, can, I love the taste. Hell yeah. We're besties now. So we're rolling this out kind of into a circle. Mine's kind of an ugly circle, but that's fine. You can see the cardamom, yes. the cinnamon, the ginger, and the lemon mm -hmm. in there too. And I'd say this is about maybe like a fourth inch thickness. They're really just like beignets. Yeah, they really are. Yeah. That's honestly what I tell people when I sell them at the market because mm -hmm. I'm like, they don't know what the hell of a dog is. <laughs> so the little <laughs> test that I like to do is grab a piece of dough, put it in the oil. Yeah, it's hot enough. And then you want to use your little spoon when it comes up. Mm -hmm. I know frying intimidates people. Yeah. But you really shouldn't get scared. I've been doing this since I was a kid, like frying things in general. Mm -hmm. So you want to fry it till it's golden brown. And then after a while, you can kind of stop at like pouring the oil on top of it. Mm -hmm. And you want it like a nice golden brown. So we're almost there. Like it's really bubbling different. Yeah. Because of the pot. Mm hmm It does. My mom would love this. Yeah, this pot is magical. That's a voodoo in that pot. <laughs> <laughs> so this is kind of the browning that I'm looking for. This is golden brown. And then you can go ahead and add another one. You can come over anytime. <laughs> Mandazi. Hell yes. <laughs> I'll just text you one word, Mandazi, and then you're on your way. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, when you said powdered sugar, like in New Orleans, you eat beignets with the powdered sugar, and you just you Hell can't. Yeah. I could not go with a shirt like this, <laughs> right? It, you'd be ruined, right? A mountain of powdered sugar. So we're ready to try. This is breakfast. <laughs> Same. Mm. God, that cardamom is. The bomb. It's like still got a little pockets, but it's also still got flesh. Mm -hmm. Here's my other guest, Drew. She's Hi. a musician. <laughs> um, I'll post her link um, down below in the description box of her music, her YouTube, her Instagram, all that. So yeah, go check her out. Some and we'll be out hopefully this month. You got a Maybe single coming month. out? Yes, yeah, sure do. You got a name for it? Attic for you. Hit it up. Ooh, Attic for one. you. And well, I'm an addict for these mandazis. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Chi. Um, this is such like, a learning experience, learning culturally, you know, yes. different things, and it's my favorite thing to do. But yeah, thank you so much, and y'all yeah. want to see her back? She's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Hit the notification bell for you didn't find out when I post another video. And yeah, thanks for coming, and uh, we're gonna finish all these. So yeah. catch y'all back later in the next one. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. Powdered sugar hug. Oh my god. Yes. I'm just gonna eat this all. You know, I'm like, I'm not saving this.